you saw me in front of this last time. This is Cincinnati Public Radio Studios, but this is not where today's video is gonna be. Today's video, we're gonna go down the street, down the freeway, around some turns, up a hill, and we're gonna go look at their transmitter site for WGUC and WVXU. And they have done some really exciting, cool things with that site. It's got a lot of history in it. And so uh, Don was kind enough to take me on a tour of that. And we'll go right now. Let's stop talking about it and just go see it. Let's go right now. And with a big, puffy, cloudy day like today, if you stand outside the tower, and you look up all the way to the top, you start feeling that vertigo. Although the clouds aren't moving that fast today, so it's not as bad. <coughs> We're due to come back up here, uh, actually in the next week or two, and redo some of the cabling for the network because it's uh, it was kind of a lot of it was put in to get us moved over as fast as possible but we can go in the back and show you that infamous uh, pro craft cabling uh, we have two stations WVXU and WGUC we're sending them both into this combiner, ERI combiner, um, and going up to one antenna on the tower. WGUC is just under uh, 11 kilowatts, and VXU is under uh, TPO, and uh, WVXU is just under uh, 19 kilowatts TPO. So we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 kilowatts coming out of uh, the two transmitters going up to the tower, up the antenna. Yeah, actually, um, that's that was not because of the power. Um, that was what they what um, ERI does as a standard on their outputs. They'll do a reducer on it to get you down to the three and eighth inch. So that that's their standard setup for those combiners. They originally wanted me to put them on the ground, but we had the the original transmitter we had um, for uh, for VXU was a um, was um, I'm trying to think what the it was a Harris. Oh, I forget the the brand the uh, model number, but it had the external power supply. Okay. which sat right here it, it was as big as that that grounding strap was going to it but it was it was a huge external power supply so it, with all the transformers in it and stuff and and we just didn't have the space up here to put those sitting down on the floor so we asked them to build us a rack to go up a vertical so so these are liquid cooled our main transmitters are the liquid cooled flexivius um they um they dump the air, obviously dump the heat outside, which has been really a, a, a blessing. Um, the, the air conditioning that was up here, we, like, we ran a closed loop system and the air conditioning was struggling, not struggling, but it was, it was being worked full time. Yeah. And it would go down once or twice a year. Um, since we got these in and we're dumping what, uh, 70, 80% of the heat outside, um, w our air conditioning uh, system it has gone to back to a normal routine for an air conditioning system, and um, we haven't lost it one time in four years now. We're, so we're averaging one to two a year, down to nothing over four years. Now I say that it's going to go out tomorrow on me, but um, but it's really nice. Uh, the the liquid cool. We are right on the hairy edge of being uh, ROI being worth it, um, but um, we decided to go for it, and I'm glad we did. Yeah. So and running. The two outside transmitters are our main transmitters. They're both the same, identical, and the two inside ones are air-cooled. They're identical. So running that configuration, we have some redundancy built in. Um, since this transmitter is producing less than, um, uh, less than just under 11 kilowatts, um, we can actually remove some power supplies and, and uh, RF modules from here to use in our uh, other transmitter if we have to. Um, you know, and, and of course we can lose a couple modules in this before it will affect any output. So, um, so we have built-in uh, redundancy, um, not to mention that the transmitter itself has built-in redundancy, um, so it, 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 can, it can keep surviving quite a long time on its, by itself. Um, and these transmitters, um, our air-cooled transmitters, uh, were in for about eight years. And 
loved them. Um, they gave us absolutely no problem at all. Um, uh, but knowing full well we were going into a capital campaign and a capital budget uh, increase, uh, we decided to do everything all at once so that we could um, uh, we could package it all together. Now, I, I, like I said, the liquid cooled transmitters were are about two years old, uh, two to three years old. So those were kind of the precursor to all this during COVID and stuff. We got those in. Um, as you mentioned earlier, um, the building was in the in the drawing stage since uh, 2020. Right before COVID, we started capital uh, campaign for that um, at a different location. So that was all kind of all mixed in together with one capital budget. We have multiple paths, um, you know, uh, multiple paths to get here. STLs, and, and as any any engineer will tell you, we're always thinking of Plan C and D. But yeah. but we have multiple paths to get up here. We have multiple transmitters, multiple exciters. We um, we have the our our, our old um, Omnia nines that we haven't hooked up yet that we will be hooking up um, very shortly. We've been concerned with getting the bugs fixed at the building right now, but um, so we'll have the Omnia 9, the backup Omnia 9 feeding our backup transmitters so that we have a, I like to think that uh, redundancy, um, you, you almost need to separate it completely in my mind so that if you have a problem with your main signal, you don't have to try to decipher it in the middle of a Saturday afternoon, switch over to the backup and then get up here and try to figure out what's the matter with your main. And so that's what we're going to be doing is um, uh, putting our backup audio path solely on the backup transmitters not to say that we're not going to have them interlinked so that we could put the main audio path on the trans on the backup transmitter and the backup on this but the, the theory of operation here is if anything's wrong with the main path we just go to the backup and and settle it in, in about a three minute pro time period and then try to decipher what's what's really going on with the main we, we we're using the omnias uh, we're using them for uh, for everything and we're, we're even using them for our uh, HD channels and some of our streaming stuff, we're sending that stuff back, you know, the, the streaming stuff back to the studios. So um, we have some, uh, uh, some proof of concept of, or, or, or um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, a, live, uh, a, a live proof that the STL is working. Uh, um, yeah, confidence. Confident, yeah. yeah. So we, we have some confidence feed going back to the studios uh, because we're processing some of the stuff in here. But the, the, you know, the, the multi-core uh, processors, being able to utilize those for everything, kind of gives you a, 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 a more of a, a unified signal sound yeah. so that um, uh, your, your streaming sound and, and your HD sound and your, and your FM analog sound, they all, they all have a similar concept. So, and the only way to utilize that, since they don't have as, as enough inputs and outputs on the Omnia, is to go through the, uh, the nodes. I, you couldn't color me more impressed with the, uh, the interplex. Um, the, the, the switching on them is phenomenal. So this used to be, um, actually, there, this was the studios for um, uh, Channel 9 back in the 50s. And, um, uh, you know, I'll have to do some research and tell you what shows came out of here, but some big shows came out of here. This used to be a newsroom. <laughs> Interesting enough, the... the the announcer, uh, I think this was the weather uh, room. The announcer would stand at, over there, and um, I got to show you on the other side of this wall here. This was the camera room. Again, I mean, we're kind of in a little bit of a messy area here, but this was the camera room, and this was the um, this is where the camera was positioned right here, and they would raise and lower this to be able to take a shot of the person that was in that room from this room. Um, but wow. yeah, this used to be the studio complex for the, uh, for channel nine. Have you ever had an audio issue that just made you upset? But don't worry because one of the sponsors for today's video has you covered. Angry Audio offers all sorts of gadgets and gizmos from headphone disconnectors to prevent you from ripping the headphone jack right out of the console to mic processors and software to make your streams sound amazing. I wanna focus on something specific, the Angry Audio Rave. It's their powerful yet affordable audio console built for radio stations just like yours. 
The Rave has eight stereo line inputs, up to four microphone inputs, two output mix buses, two mix minus outputs, a monitor feed for your control room, and so much more. The Rave is made of anodized aluminum, silky smooth faders, and tally outputs for your on-air light. Get major market quality at small market prices. Learn more at angryaudio.com. Thank you, Angry Audio, for sponsoring this video. Yes, main tower there. I keep dropping that key. Um, the, these are our heat exchangers, which uh, seriously, they just they just keep running. They don't they don't stop, man. Um, brings out a lot of, a lot of nice heat outside. This uh, generator is from the. Uh, from the early 90s, <coughs> WCPO donated it to us. And we had, um, it used to be inside the building, and uh, inside their building, and they upgraded theirs. So we had this shipped out and put a belly tank on it and a casing around it. It's a 300 kilowatt generator, but we actually only have 200 kilowatts going into the building um, off of this. So we're leaving 100 kilowatts out here. But um, it's, they reconditioned the motor and um, in, in the generator part of it. And, um, and like I said, it's, it's been running really well, um, but it is 35 years old. Um, so we are looking at um, possibly upgrading that at some point uh, in the near future. So when I say we have no more capital expenses, I, I lied. Um, the, 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 the good news is, is as a nonprofit organization, we do look for grants, and we have a, a, a potential grant coming in to help pay for almost all of it. Um, but it holds 1,200 gallons of diesel. And when it's running, you can't hear yourself think. But it, uh, knock on wood, hasn't given us much of a problem at all. Yeah, it really is a beast. And uh, the belly tank looks bigger because as anybody would know, the, um, uh, the capacity of the inner tank or the outer tank has to, the, the, the gap between them has to hold a, a, a leak. If there's the inner tank links, uh, it, it goes into the outer tank. But, um, but under normal conditions, um, we don't need to get it filled, but every two or three years. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, running at it weekly. Yeah. Running tests weekly and um, and a full test um, at least a couple times a year. Well, that generator used to be right in. This used to be two garage doors right here, okay. and that generator was right inside this room. They were glass garage doors, and the generator was right there. And um, and they actually, uh, when they took it out of there, they gave it to us. Um, they put a brand new one in that room, okay. and that's when they gave us that one. And um, I lined up the GPS antennas out here, but one of the cool things we did was we have radio reading services on our um, subcarrier, and they are literally about half a mile across the freeway. So we threw up a, uh, a little unlicensed point to point, and that's been up there. I seriously, I can't get over it, but that's been up there about five years, and it hasn't given us one fit. Wow. It's a ubiquity, um, I forget what the model number is. It's just a half a mile and it eliminated the need for them to have a hard line they were using um cincinnati bell copper to get their signal to us which was expensive 100 bucks a month i think or something like that <clears throat> it was a a, a um, i think that was a 7k line that they were using um and we were able to eliminate it about five years ago using it i don't know 150 dollar point to point and um it does a phenomenal job very reliable. This building was almost twice the size, but the back half of it started going down the hill. So they took down, they took down the back half of it, and you see it came out to here. They took this down. Yeah, our air conditioner's back here. As you can tell, the, that back slab is going downhill. Yeah. So they took down this back half and they turned it into a transmitter building. It's been a very good building to us and to uh, CPO. 
channel 9 now in here? Yes. Okay. So this is still their yes. transmitter yeah. site. Yes. And we used to be a little bit more history. WGUC used to be at like 800 feet on that tower. Oh, okay. Hey, where are you guys up on the tower? We are, you see the four fiberglass ray domes on the right hand side? Uh, yes. That's ours. Okay. Across from tower from us on the left, that is WCPO's backup antenna. Uh -huh. Their main antenna is the very top one. Underneath the very top TV antenna is WBE's antenna. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being part of this channel. I appreciate you. Again, thank you to Don for the tour of the transmitter sites and for Will for his tour of the studio side and Don as well and Brian who gave a tour of the performance uh, space and to you for being a part of this channel. Thank you for watching. And um, if you haven't seen part one yet, which is the studio sites, that's gonna be right here. You should go watch that if you watch this one first. Okay, until next time, keep learning.